friends in Christ, in this Lenten season, we have heard our Lord's call to struggle against sin, death, and the devil. All that keeps us from loving God and each other. This is the struggle to which we were called at baptism. Within the community of the church, God never wearies of forgiving sin and giving the peace of reconciliation. On this night, we confess our sin against God and our neighbor and enter the celebration of Christ's death and resurrection, reconciled with God and one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Please join me in our first hymn. household. If any household is too small for a whole lamb, 
they must share one with their nearest neighbor, having taken into account the number of people there are. You are to determine the amount of lamb needed in accordance with what each person will eat. The animals you choose must be year-old males without defect, and you may take them from the sheep or the goats. Take care of them until the 14th day of the month, when all the people of the community of Israel must slaughter them at twilight. Then they are to take some sides of the blood and put it on the sides and tops of the door frames of the houses where they eat the lambs. That same night they are to eat the meat roasted over the fire, along with bitter herbs and bread made without yeast. Do not eat the meat raw or cooked in water, but roast it over the fire, head, legs, and inner parts. Do not leave any of it till morning. If some is left till morning, you must burn it. This is how you are to eat it, with your cloak tucked into your belt, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand. Eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. On that same night, I will pass through Egypt and strike down every firstborn, both men and animals. And I will bring judgment on all the gods of Egypt. I am the Lord. The blood will be a sign for you on the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. No destructive plague will touch you when I strike Egypt. This is a day you are to commemorate. For the generations to come, you shall celebrate it as a festival to the Lord, a lasting ordinance. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. We will pray Psalm 116, verses 1 and 2, and verses 12 through 19. I love the Lord, for he heard my voice. He heard my cry for mercy. Because he turned his ear to me, I will call on him as long as I live. How can I repay the Lord for all his goodness to me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. O oh Lord, truly I am your servant. I am your servant, the son of your maidservant. You have freed me from my chains. I will sacrifice a thank you offering to you and call on the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people, in the courts of the house of the Lord, in your midst, O Jerusalem. Praise the Lord. A reading from 1 Corinthians. For I have received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it, in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Jesus. 
Jesus knew that the Father had put all things under his power and that he had come from God and was returning to God. So he got up from the meal, took off his outer clothing and wrapped a towel around his waist. After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash his disciples' feet, drying them with the towel that was wrapped around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus replied, You do not realize now what I am doing, but later you will understand. No, said Peter, you shall never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no part with me. Then, Lord, Simon Peter replied, Not just my feet, but my hands and my head as well. Jesus answered, a person who has had a bath needs only to wash his feet. His whole body is clean, and you are clean, though not every one of you. For he knew who was going to betray him, and that was why he said not everyone was clean. When he had finished washing their feet, he put on his clothes and returned to his place. Do you understand what I have done for you? He asked them. You call me teacher and Lord, and rightly so, for that is what I am. Now that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also should wash one another's feet. I have set you an example that you should do as I have done for you. I tell you the truth, no servant is greater than his master, nor is a messenger greater than the one who sent him. Now that you know these things, you will be blessed if you do them. By this, all men will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Christ. Jesus knew that it was time for him to leave this world and go back to the Father. Before the night was through, he would be betrayed, arrested, and abandoned by people with whom he now shared a meal. But instead of running away, naming those who would betray him, or plotting his revenge, Jesus does something unexpected. He gets up from the table, takes off his outer garment, and wraps a towel around his waist. I'm sure the disciples were wondering what was unfolding. This was so unusual. He pours water into a basin and begins to wash their feet. While washing feet was customary at the time to remove dust and dirt of the roads people traveled, it was usually done by a servant in the house. Jesus wasn't concerned about the image, though. His identity was not rooted in appearance, but in the awareness that he came from God, and to God he would return. Jesus was able to love and serve others because he knew how much he was loved by God. By washing the feet of his disciples, he exampled to them the true meaning of servanthood as a way of life. Within the dust and dirt of the world, God's kingdom grows through expressions of love, humility, and service. Not as the world would have you believe through pride, power, or position. As the disciples struggle to understand, and perhaps even as we struggle to understand sometimes today, Jesus commands them, commands us to love each other as he loves us, as he loved them. He had always loved those who were his own in the world, and he would love them all the way to the end. Even in their imperfections, even in our imperfections. Just as Jesus' ability to love and serve others was rooted in his awareness of identity 
as the beloved of God, he wanted his disciples in all times and places to know that he loved them. And through his love, they were both commended and empowered to become true servants of God. Before love and service can be about others, though, it has to be about you. It has to be about me. In his shame for denying Jesus, not once, but three times, Peter would remember the night Jesus washed his dirty feet. His whole self was loved. Dirty feet, flaws and all, his whole self. Between the excitement of Palm Sunday and the celebration of Easter, may we take time to let things get personal. Inviting God to love us with a love that reaches into all the dark, hidden, and imperfect places in our lives. And loves us there, dirty feet, flaws, and all. Amen.
The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Now is the time in our service when we begin to remove the symbols of our worship. We remember the cruel humiliation that Jesus endured at the hands of the government and church officials. After the Last Supper, less than 24 hours remained in the life of our Lord. Events moved rapidly, prayer in Gethsemane, betrayal by Judas, his arrest, mock trials before Caiaphas, Herod, and Pilate, the crowd shouting crucify, a painful beating, the trudge to Golgotha, his execution, by 3 o'clock that Friday afternoon, Jesus of Nazareth was dead. Christ died for us. Indeed, rarely will anyone die for a righteous person. Though perhaps for a good person, someone might actually dare to die. But God proves his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. While on the cross, Jesus said, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? In his mind, Jesus was singing a song of his faith. The altar is covered with symbols of our faith. Each, place, each piece placed there with purpose and care. They are signs of a faith that is alive. But tonight, we remember that Jesus died. It's not right that the altar remain unaffected by his death. We therefore strip it of life and meaning as was our Lord. The offering plates are symbols of our thankfulness to God. We give because he first gave to us from the depth of his love. John says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son. Jesus was God's greatest gift, and as we stand beneath the cross, we see it taken from. There's little reason to give thanks. We take away the offering place. During his last supper, Jesus took bread and wine and said, This is my body and this is my blood. And another time Jesus said, For the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever, and the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood abide in me, and I in them. The one who promised life is being put into a grave. We take away the communion elements just as our Lord is taken. The missile stand holds a symbol of worship. It's a sign of the living word recorded in the Bible. The word that was written in the Bible and that comes alive in our worship was cleansed on Good Friday. We removed the Bibles and the missile stand and its symbol of worship. During his life, Jesus spoke what it was to be a child of God. His life is an example of what it means to be truly human. Creature and creator walking hand in hand. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. The events of Calvary have snuffed out that light. The world was thrown into darkness. We remove the candles because the light of life has been extinguished. The 23rd Psalm says, You prepare a table before me, my cup overflows. The altar is a table prepared for us by Jesus, our host. It is covered with brocade and fine linen, as any table would be prepared for distinguished company. The brocade is fit for royalty. We are in the presence of a king, 
The linens tell us that only the finest is right for this table. But Jesus has hosted his last meal. The host, our king, is dead. We strip the table clean. went to his death alone, abandoned by his disciples. The stole worn by the minister is a symbol of Christian ministry, a service yoke to Christ. We remove it as we remember how Jesus went alone to his death without ministers, without disciples, without followers. says, Christ did not send me to baptize, but to proclaim the gospel, and not with eloquent wisdom, so that the cross of Christ might not be emptied of its power. For the message about the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. We remove our altar cross as the one who came that we might have life and have it abundantly is being taken away from us. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equity with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness and being found in human form. He humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even death on a cross. We will now depart in silence. The omissions of benedictions at the end of Monday, Thursday, and Good Friday indicate our continuity with each other and with the service of Easter. Easter.